Uh, many, many years ago, Rabbi Yaakov Moshe Maza gave up preaching the virtues of the Talmud and uh, transformed himself into Jackie Mason, the comedian. Sounds like an old myth that I'm referring to. Eventually, he, uh, he landed on Broadway, after a lot of skepticism on people's part, uh, starring in his own one-man show twice. Uh, those who came to scoff remained to pray when they saw how hilarious he was in his Broadway show. And he won a special Tony Award for uh, at least one of those times. And he's my guest tonight, I'm happy to say. It. Phenomenal prices, Jackie Mason. Thank you, thank you. Nice to see you. Why not? <laughs> You're right. For these prices, you'll take anybody. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, blame you. I, I like to hear. I like it when you talk about uh, what's going on, uh, as well as I like it when you talk about uh, something as what's far not going on. as abstract as. Uh, uh, Gentiles taking their children to college versus Jews taking their children. Uh, but uh, right now we're obsessed with politics. We're drowning right. in it. Right. So why bring it up? <laughs> I was going to say, you know, only a cad would bring it up now after all that. But uh, I, I, I'm not so satiated that I have don't want to hear you mention a couple of things. And uh, I'd just like to hear you survey the scene of what's going on in the alleged corruption all over the place. So mm -hmm. what's wrong with our politicians that we're so sick of them? Well, what's wrong with our politicians is obviously that uh, they're all getting paid for nothing. <laughs> is that they're, it? They're all but getting paid for absolutely nothing because they never reflect what people are interested in and what they want. As long as you have a country where a politician stays in power because of big money and mm -hmm. has to spend all his time raising big money because the only way he gets elected is by having enough money for the next campaign, which costs so many astronomical millions that it's impossible to get elected without that much money, then he has to spend all his time catering to the people with the money. So and he doesn't care about the people because the people are never interested enough in politics to even know what he's doing. So he doesn't have to cater to the people. When the people uh. want to raise their voice and they really get excited about an issue, all of a sudden the guy becomes a good congressman. But mm -hmm. most people don't know who the hell the congressman is. And if you ask the average person who's your congressman, he could, he could mention the name of his chair at the, the, the table, he can even mention 50 movie stars, he can even mention the, the name of the pound of sugar, a piece of cake, a cup of coffee. He knows everything in the world except his politician. You mean if your life depended on finding 20 people quickly who could name their congressman? They have no they idea who their congressman is, they don't know who their governor is, they don't know who anybody is. I read in the paper once that President Johnson, when he was vice president, was only known to 50% of the American people. Only 50% of the people are able to identify the vice president of the United States. Now, if you don't know who your congressman is, your chances are you don't know which way he's voting. You're not going to ask me who my congressman is, are you? <laughs> After all, it's my and you don't care. <laughs> if you don't know and you don't care and you're so withered by the whole system yeah. of politics that you're giving up on it, then he knows he's free to just cater to the people who count. And the people who count are the people who are paying for his next campaign. I have a so there's no connection. Oh. I know you would love to talk, but this is yeah, my question. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> How did you get involved in my acting? <laughs> you got a whole week with shows. Now, I, this is my few minutes that I'm supposed to become a hit. No, you've touched on one of my nightmares, which is having to take a general knowledge test in public. <laughs> but I have one for uh, you. Don't anyone yell out the answer, audience. Who is Gerald Ford's vice president? Gerald Ford's <laughs> vice president. Once, once it was, uh, let me see. Isn't that a stumper? Don't Wait a yell second. Wait I know a some second. of you. So I was with a guy from Brown University who teaches uh, uh, psychology. Uh, it took four of us 20 minutes to come up with who was Gerald Ford's vice president. Rockefeller? Yes. Go to the right. head of the class. But it isn't it interesting that you had to think? Right. Because we never thought of him as a vice president because he was, in a sense, a bigger star than Gerald Ford. Right. And th you can't think of him as a right. Rockefeller. It was a great disappearing act. He sort of... Right. Sort of Thank God I got it. The chances are I'm the only I go, boy, I'm... Yeah, I, I couldn't resist, but... Better men than you. Oh, I'm making better course. ones. <laughs> There's better men than me. <laughs> have flunked that. I'm working for nothing, and I'm the better. Man. But the truth but really the is. Do you believe the politicians, for example, I like find Jennifer Flowers, should she play a role in our politics? You think or not? I don't see why she shouldn't play a role. The role she should play is whatever role he feels she deserves. If a guy wants to have an advisor, nobody else decides who his advisor should be. When other people are president, mm -hmm. you don't elect an advisor. 
So why shouldn't he have a right to make her as much of an advisor as he pleases? Because you're ultimately you're not voting for her. You're voting for whatever you supposedly believe on uh, did I uh, say, his policies. Did I say Hillary? Uh, are, are you thinking about Hillary Clinton? I mean, did, oh, like, I'm did, thinking about Hillary. I thought I knew you were. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. You're talking about the other yet. Yeah. Oh, flowers, flowers. I guess I guess the thrust, so to speak, well, of you're the talking question about would the have question. been: Did you believe Clinton on the subject of Jennifer Flowers? I don't believe him for a second that he didn't make love to Flowers. If he didn't no. make love to nobody. He ever did. I'm positively okay. sure he made love to her because it was on the tape. It's on the tape and anybody could hear it. And it was his voice on the tape. And for him to deny it makes as much sense to me as me denying that I'm sitting here. Hmm. It's on the tape. She says to him, boy, what a good time we had. He said, it wasn't bad. She says, you were a hit. He says, thank God I may have showed up. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he asked him, what happened? Nothing. I don't know why. I never heard of her. I don't know where she came from, but it's your voice. It's my voice, but it's not me. <laughs> but it was you talking. Just because I'm talking doesn't mean I was listening. I don't know. It's the whole idea of him denying that is so preposterous. People have an image of him as a liar. Now. Of course, the question is, does it matter? Would, would you let a doctor operate on you who had lied? I don't see why not. Well, then. I would like to know the person who ever said, it, uh, I, I, it's, I have the worst disease in the world, and this, there was one guy who was the best doctor in the world for this particular disease. And if you call him, he's going to save your life. But I'm not going to call him. You know why? I found out he committed adultery. Right. That's, yeah, that's Do you ever a see a guy say, I'd rather pass away than have an adulteress, <laughs> than have an adulteress save my life? That's right. <laughs> Could you imagine a person say, here's a guy never committed, never committed adultery. But and he doesn't know how to operate. Good, I'd rather pass away <laughs> with a moral person than live long from a low life. You don't want to be corrupted by the hand. By a, a low life shouldn't save my life. That's <laughs> a, this idiotic nonsense it would never apply the question of adultery to any other profession or any other business. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine anybody trying to hire a person for anything on the site who would wonder first if the guy ever committed adultery. Because if adultery was ever a barometer of your, of your right to hold a job, there was nobody working in this country. Yeah. Think of the number 80 of 80% of the people have committed adulteries in America. The rest of them cheat in Europe. <laughs> what if all the adulterers had to leave show business? I never, would a guy ever apply that same judgment to himself that he wants to apply to the president, to the possibility of a president? Would a guy ever say that he doesn't deserve a job because he once committed adultery? Or would everybody accept the idea that nobody should hire him because he committed? The same people are accusing him of adultery, the same newspaper right. men. Why don't they take the test? Why do they Why don't Well, let's ask these newspaper men, did you ever commit adultery? And all those newspaper men who are asking him that question should be obligated to quit if they committed adultery before they take his job away from him. But where would our newspapers <laughs> come from? We'll be back right after this <laughs> massage. Talking with the often imitated but never duplicated Jackie Mason. Oh, thanks a lot. I, 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 let's see, we were on the subject of politics and character and adultery. And, uh, I think this whole question of his character and the whole question of whether he's a liar or not, there's no doubt that he's a liar. Everybody knows he's a liar. Mm. But the question is how much of a liar is he and how, how is relevant to the issue of his lying be and on what subject do you lie? Okay. If I lie about something that doesn't relate to what you're trying to accomplish, let's assume I'm a big liar but I'm a great carpenter. And you want me to fix a chair? Mm -hmm. Do you care if I'm a liar about adultery because I can't? The question is, will I fix the chair or not? What is my track record in fixing chairs? That's what you want to know. Yeah. My character in other fields that I don't <laughs> relate whatsoever to the job you want to accomplished is stupid to make an issue out of it. When Bush lies, there's the big difference. Bush lies about things that relate to your pocketbook, that cost you money. He told the whole country, read my lips, no new taxes. That was a solemn pledge, and it was a direct lie to the American people, and it cost all the American people a fortune of money. If I swear to you I'm not going to ask you for money, then I steal the money out of your pocket. I'm, re I'm lying about something that's relevant to you, that relates to you, that costs you a fortune. What do you care if I commit adultery with a site in Yenta at 4 o'clock in the morning? I didn't ask you for money. You didn't pay for the date. I didn't send you the bill for the motel. What is your hazardship business? What if you... What, 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 but if I relate to you, here's a lie. It's the same thing like you know, another lie that he told us about marijuana. He says, I smoked marijuana, but I didn't inhale. Who's the putz that believes he didn't inhale? <laughs> How stupid could you be to believe it didn't inhale? Would you put a pastrami sandwich in your mouth if you didn't want to swallow it? <laughs> <laughs> I never well, saw a guy walking around with a pastrami sandwich. What are you doing? I'm not swallowing. <laughs> I mean, there's a limit to how stupid people expect to be. Yeah, of I course see. he smoked the marijuana, but why should we care if he did? If a guy smoked marijuana, he took a puff out of cigarettes when he was 18, he's now 45, is it still affecting him? 
Are you worried? Are you worried when it's time to smoke, to, to pass a tax bill or something? He's going to walk around and say, Oh, yeah, bro, I'm dizzy. <laughs> Wait, I smoked marijuana when I was 12. <laughs> I mean, it's stupid. Yeah, to, you couldn't use that as a defense for driving badly or anything. It's true. I didn't thought of it quite the way all, you like, said. Even, even if you do smoke marijuana today, it can't hurt anybody. Cigarettes cause cancer and kill people. The studies made of marijuana is that it, it, it hurts you practically not at all compared to, to, the, to the misery that a cigarette could cause, to the sicknesses and diseases mm -hmm. and the death and destruction that comes from a cigarette. If anything should be illegal, it should be a cigarette. But the well, government liquor, doesn't make liquor any money kills, on marijuana. Liquor it? kills 100,000 people a year on the yes. highways of America. Nobody ever died from marijuana. You can't kill people in a car for marijuana because if you're on marijuana, you can't find your car. <laughs> The government's exaggerated it over the years. And you'll never know what you're driving anyway. He doesn't know the difference between the tire and the wheel. How would he know? I saw a guy marijuana smoking a tire and drink oh, for a year and a half. I always give up. Nothing came of it. Well, are people under the impression that all drugs turn you into a fanatical wild fiend also. Now, Coke will. But other things, mostly, you want to lie down or get the, under the rug or something. This, this, the, uh, the degree of, of misery that marijuana has caused, the, the New York Times had a whole study of it and proved that marijuana is practically a, a harmless drug compared to the degree of, of misery that uh, comes from cigarettes. Sure, but the government makes a lot of money off cigarettes. And That's exactly it. The government uh, is the most hypocritical thing in the world. This is why, why they are so hypocritical. As I said to you before, people are not involved and don't care what, they, what they're voting for or what they're voting about, and they never get involved enough to care, and then they blame the government for being so corrupt. You're not do you remember? Do you remember when Wolford, Wolford, what's his name in Pennsylvania, the new senator who beat Thornburg? Yes. Oh, here's my test again. Yeah, yeah, I know him very well. He just beat Thornburg. Thornburg was the, was a fifty to one favorite. He was forty points ahead in all the polls. He was the hot man of Pennsylvania. He was once the governor, then the attorney general. He came back a forty point ahead favorite against a man nobody ever heard of. But this man made an issue about health about our national health program. And he said that's the most important issue of our time. And he hit the guts of the people of that of Pennsylvania because they're all concerned about national health and they don't have it and nobody made an issue out of it before. And it was the first time that people got involved and all of a sudden Thornburg lost. An impossible situation happened. And now all of a sudden Bush's main program is national health and every program of every candidate is national health. Why? They because the people cared. They saw the, they they saw saw the evidence They there. saw the evidence there that you could lose your election. Yeah. And that's why the people stink in this country, not the politicians. Wait a minute, Every the person that says that the politicians are no good stinks himself. Aren't we the people? That's right. We and stink. The people stink. You know why they stink? They don't get involved enough to care about what's happening, and then they blame the politician for not listening. Oh, you're it's just... It's your business to be involved in what's happening in this country. Hey. If you don't care, don't blame the politician, and don't claim it's impossible to do anything about it. You could do something about it if you were concerned. That's how Thornburg was thrown out. That's why all the candidates are talking about national health. If you cared enough about national health before, we would have had national health 20 years ago or 40 years ago. So who's to blame for this? The people. The people in this country are no good. That's why I'm... That's why when I... That's right. That's why when I go any place, I don't talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. I, I only talk to myself. I'm the only person we're dealing with. Because I'm the only person who cares about what's happening. Do you Thank have God any... Uh, like me. If not for me, there would be nobody to talk to. Do you have any hobbies? <laughs> this is it. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I'm not going to yell if you don't like it here. Why don't you go back where you came from? <laughs> you got to well, talk up. Otherwise, you accomplish nothing in this country. When we come back, I have a bone to pick with you. I don't know why you uh, so blatantly... A bone to pick? I got why you I'm too busy to hang around picking. Why you assumed I'm a Gentile. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> Yeah, the do, you, do you get upset over the morality poses that some people strike these days? Uh, the outrage that will happen with condoms, for example, distributing condoms in schools. Some people just instantly see it as evil. Others say, I don't like it, but it's a good idea, I'm afraid I have to admit. Well, I don't think it should be in schools. It should be in apartment houses. <laughs> because I could use it more than that. Well, I, I, I don't know where... Uh, I don't know. I'm amazed that in the budget of New York they have uh, money for nothing except condoms. It's the only thing you can get for nothing in this city. <laughs> you mean? And, uh, and I don't know. I don't know if you should be distributing it or not, because what purpose is there in distributing it? Do you feel it's good to distribute condoms? Why should sure. you? Why should you make a suggestion to a person here? Go ahead, start working. <laughs> Well, I mean, if you didn't give it to him, he'd sit in the house and do homework. Well, that's it. Who's going to think of homework when you're sitting around with a condom in your head? 
<laughs> is this the way to, 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 to tell people? I think you should give him a pencil, but maybe he'll do something. <laughs> well, now, <laughs> your, your, your logic is infallible. There's no way I can come back at it. I just... Uh, I, just, you I don't to... think it's like walking over to say, if you think it's wrong for kids that age to have sex, why give them condoms? Mm -hmm. Would you walk over and give them a gun in case you want to shoot somebody? I think it's bad taste. Oh, oh bad taste, but bad not taste, impractical. Bad taste to give them condoms. Uh, otherwise, I think a better idea, ship in a girl and then give them a condom. Why, what if you have a condom without a girl? That's boring. <laughs> See, you know, I, I, I didn't so agree with you until I got here, and now I see it all. <laughs> I would have thought that was a narrow, bigoted, and frivolous view, but now I see it all. <laughs> the the Pee Wee Herman case is somewhat behind us, but it seemed a lot of people were striking more. I met him last week. I tried to that. shake his hands, but he was busy at the time. But the <laughs> oh, that's disgusting of you. Uh, I sent him a telegram at the time. Wh what did you want to ask me about that situation? I don't, I don't remember now because you so startled me with uh, <laughs> what some people would have seen as a vulgarism on your part. I wouldn't say it's a vulgarism. No, I All I said is he was busy. The fact that you see it as vulgar means that you yourself are probably a vulgar person. <laughs> because you're true. thinking of vulgar things. All I know is he was busy. I didn't say why he was busy. No, I know. You, you revealed my dirty mind, didn't you? That's my point. That's right. I see it all now as, as I keep but seeing there's, it. there's no chance. There's no chance. The Gentiles have all the shows. I... <laughs> Come on. <laughs> In the green room, you made a blatant assumption about me. You, were, you said to one guy, are you Jewish? Yeah, are you Jewish? Yeah, and you didn't even ask me. And You're a Gentile. I, I thought, why am I left out of the question? Well, because you look to me like a Gentile. <laughs> oh, you can go by that? I would say that you could go by that. If you go, if you go by studies, psychological studies or genetic studies or biological studies, you, you, nobody will say that you could tell by looking at a person if he's a Jew or a Gentile because there's no proof that there's an actual structural difference that identifiable right so therefore people could say scientifically you can't prove it but how come every time you look at a person you could almost always tell if he's a Jew or a Gentile <laughs> you could almost always tell a Jew looks busier <laughs> is that how you go he looks like he's sweating he's got, he's he's about to complain about something <laughs> He's about to, uh, to, to holler, curse, cry. Uh, somehow he looks like he's busy. He can't hang around too long doing nothing. A gentile looks as like there, slips uh, <laughs> It comes, it goes, it doesn't. It's, I don't remember. Chabas and Dred, I make a living close enough. It's Did you say Chabas and Dred? <laughs> looks like a different mental attitude somehow. <laughs> People think they're judging the structure of their face. They see a certain different mental attitude. Just like when a person comes from a small town. You could usually tell that he's an out-of-towner compared to a New Yorker. Mm -hmm. A New Yorker has no time. Leave that putz of it. Hello, I've got no time. So long, I'll tell you later. Call a guy out of town. Yeah, nice to see you. Schluff the lip. It looks like they have nothing to live for. If they do, they don't care what it is. They don't remember. It's not important. The New Yorkers are always ever... busy. Why do you think every New Yorker is looking for his answering machine? Every 10 seconds, who called? They're not working. They must know who called. A guy, every guy without a job. Whoops, I gotta call my service. Nobody called? Thank God. Oh, he's happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the funniest things you ever said was that Jews are not scary. I believe your wording was something like, you never saw three blacks walking down the street and saying, here comes a Jew, let's cross over. Right. <laughs> Do you remember saying that yeah. in, in your Broadway I said, watch show? out, there's a Jew over there. That was in my first show. Yeah, yeah. Well, that brought down the house. Have you ever seen anybody walk into, afraid to walk into a Jewish neighborhood because he might get killed by an accountant? <laughs> That's the way I found well, it. Well, I, I, I was killed by an accountant in other ways once. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I think I know what you mean. Do, do you feel you're a star yet? You've admitted to an obsession with stardom years ago. I always had an obsession with stardom. I always was uh, desperate about becoming a star. I always, I suffered and struggled all my life to, towards the idea of trying to prove that somehow I deserved to be a star. And who meant star to you, Bob Hope? Dick Cabot meant to star to me. Oh, well, <laughs> see, there's your problem. You want me to tell you the, you want me to, you want me to tell you the truth? I, I uh, mean this honestly, I'm not trying to be solicitous because I can't make a living from him. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is I always looked at you as one of the, my favorite stars because not only did oh, you wait. represent to me the kind of a person who made it big because I saw you on television, uh, on major stations, major shows uh, for the last 20, 25 years, but also you represented the kind of a guy to me that I wanted to emulate. I wanted to become the kind of a star who doesn't have to compromise himself to, to enjoy his stardom, who could express Ooh. what he feels, what he thinks, what he believes. And I always saw you do that. You'd but you do all those things, too, so you now, now, now I have a chance to do it. That's why I feel I'm 
made it. On my way up, I had to I had to cater to people in small towns. I played every cockamamie little town in America. Not like I'm putting down the small towns, yeah. but let's be honest about it. It was a very hard life for me. It was great for them, because the people who lived there. For me, it was a very tough, rough, miserable kind of experience. Yeah. Well, uh, going checking into cockamamie little motels, uh, being on the road in every honky tonk place, being called the Jew bastard a thousand times. A thousand times I was called the Jew bastard. This is only by the Jews. Who knows what the Gentiles call? <laughs> <laughs> A friend of mine remembers a bizarre incident. I'm racing with the clock here. Years ago, you're walking into a restaurant in New York. I hope I have the right fighter. Jake LaMotta yeah. arose and said, you little Jew bastard. And everyone froze. Everyone was embarrassed. Whether he was drunk, crazy, what? He said, we never found out. He repeated it. You left. The people in the restaurant looked around. Do you recall this? Jake Lamada has always said that to me, but Jake Lamada. I think it may be your old buddies. That's got to be the never explanation. Never meant, meant anything by it. Because oh, he's, okay. He's, he's a lovable, wonderful guy. That's the way he kids me all the time. As a matter of fact, oh. I, I wrote a boxing routine that I used to do all my life, and I gave it to him as a present, and he's been doing my boxing okay. routine. Okay. My boxing routine now for at least 15 years. You just cleared up something for a friend of mine. Oh, no, he's a lovable years. character. Well, you oh. know, when people love each other, they can say anything and you accept it. Right. It's people it count the words. It's not the words. It's you the can script. call him a fancy Schwartz over the mustache, and right. they wouldn't get upset. No good. <laughs> <laughs> it depends how you mean it. It doesn't depend that I, like I just said, everybody in the world stinks. I didn't see anybody get offended because they could sense that this is some way of expressing myself. It's a kind it of a joke meant to deliver a message that mm -hmm. had much more profound significance than calling people stupid. I'm calling them stupid for their to, because I'm trying to help them, and this is my way of expressing myself, and they feel it. They so know, there's a lot of the they know it doesn't come from hate or the or venom or hostility it comes from an exaggerated way of trying to make a point and sometimes when you come over to your best friend you say hello you son of a bitch yeah <laughs> if you read in the paper a guy called the guy a son of a bitch he figures he has to hire a lawyer to get him yeah, we got the proof right here someone heard right. it but if you see the way the guy said it and who he said it to you know it's a joke it's a joke it's in the spirit that I comes. hate to interrupt you old bastard but we're out of time <laughs> See you next time. So long. <laughs>